are you doing? It's good to be here, Sierra. You, I mean, I sound really upbeat for a really depressing story, um, but it's a fascinating one. It's about GPS, and really, we rarely think about it because it just exists. Yeah, that's part of the problem is that GPS has never gone down, and you're like, wait a second. GPS, are you talking about the sort of blue dot on the phone mm -hmm. or the way I navigate around? It's used by so many uh, parts of the economy. Think about it, that if GPS were to go down or to be jammed or spoofed, which mm -hmm. you're going to hear about in a second, we're talking about Amazon out of business overnight, uh, UPS, FedEx, that's how they find your house, right? Uh, and then also all the other systems that use it, like Uber and Lyft, they'd be out of business. That's how you get them to come to where you are, and that's how they take you to where you want to go. But it's so much more than just navigation and position. It's also a time signal coming from these 31 satellites that are constantly orbiting the Earth. And that time signal syncs literally everything in our economy, from the stock market to the power grid to your cell phones. The Internet would go down. The economy would be tanked essentially overnight. And we looked into, is it really vulnerable? Uh, hint, the answer is yes. And also, is there a backup? Hint, the answer is no. There's a looming threat on the horizon. The impact would be enormous. A very devastating, uh, cascading series of events. Airplanes would be grounded. But eventually, the power grid would stop operating. First responders would have a hard time getting to emergencies, finding your house. It is a trillion dollar risk that our economy is facing. Our economy comes to a halt in, within a month. Because we couldn't move data, we couldn't move people, and we couldn't move goods. No one would have cell service. The number you have dialed. Is the government doing enough to address this? No. They're talking about GPS, the United States Global Positioning System. The uh, vulnerability of GPS, both jamming and, and spoofing, is a real considerable uh, threat to the country and needs to be taken seriously. Admiral Thad Allen chairs the nation's advisory board on position, navigation, and timing. Our entire economy could sink if the civilian signal is compromised. More than two dozen top experts sounding the alarm about threats to the system. We are not seeing fewer incidents of disruption. We are seeing far more. Until something happens, people aren't aware that there's a vulnerability. Well, as what usually happens, uh, you deal with the wolf that's closest to the door. Where in the world are are we? GPS brings us down to earth with precise location. But position and navigation are only half the story. The better question is, when in the world are we? GPS is the nation's hyper-accurate clock. And without it, major systems would go out of sync or stop altogether. It's about time to realize it's about time. We're talking about billionths of a second. A failure of that timing signal from GPS could cause cascading blackouts across the nation because the plants that power your home are synced to the same GPS signal that is used to time every single trade on Wall Street. The stock market would shut down. Yep. Banks couldn't do transactions. Nope. The United States right now does not have a redundant GPS or timing system. That's correct. The GPS is it. Yes. These 31 satellites, if something happens to them... We're, we're toast. Place. We're toast. Do we have a backup system for this currently in the United States? Not a single backup. Brad Parkinson should know. He invented GPS half a century ago for the military. The GPS utility and usefulness has kind of crept into society and the average citizen doesn't ever see it. They don't even know it's there. They don't realize the harm that would be done if it suddenly weren't. The GPS signal is so faint, experts say it's easy to jam. GPS signal is a tenth of a millionth of a billionth of a watt. Or overpower with fake coordinates. Over one month, there were 41,000 Boeing, Airbus, and other aircraft uh, that were affected by GPS spoofing. For less than $100, you can build a spoofer jammer capable of taking out any GPS receiver, no matter how expensive it is, anywhere. Including on an airplane loaded with passengers. Oh yes, absolutely. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, an airplane doesn't know where it is, that, that's a problem. Well, you've had cases in the maritime where uh, the actual position of a ship is shown to be inland. Shown to be inland? Yes. 
Russia and China both have extensive backup systems, while we have none under U.S. control. Our adversaries know we are at risk. Experts want to bring GPS back down to Earth, literally. Phone companies propose using cell towers as a GPS backup, one of many land-based solutions. The broadcasters have a solution to this? Yes, we have. The solution is something that we call BPS, and that is uh, for Broadcast Positioning System. Television towers already send signals out across the nation. Sam Matheny and the National Association of Broadcasters invented a GPS backup, embedding precise time information into TV broadcasts. In essence, the exact same timing signal that is transmitted via a GPS satellite, except we're doing it from a television tower. That system is capable of carrying time that's as good as what you get from GPS. Uh, it shows great promise. It has great accuracy. The infrastructure is already in place. The GPS Advisory Board has been recommending a backup system for decades. The alphabet soup of agencies responsible for GPS have not yet taken that advice. I think there's going to be a reckoning. Everyone in that room is concerned about this. You betcha. And right now, all you can do is advise. That's correct. You can't actually take action. No. The urgency is now. We've got to get it on. It's all about timing and a signal as invisible as the threat just over the horizon. Brendan, of course, you mentioned at the top of this story when just the average viewer or listener thinks about GPS, we're thinking about how it affects our Amazon packages, but this is so much more than that. I mean, you got a lot of the smartest people in the room at a conference. Tell us how you learned about it. Yeah, well, actually, uh, our broadcast company got a briefing from the National Association of Broadcasters that this was a problem and they thought they might have a fix. Mm -hmm. Now, that filtered down uh, to me where they said, hey, have we ever done a story on this? And I said, no, I don't think anyone's really done a story on this, at least uh, to a wide broadcast audience. And so my only assignment was to go out and cover the story that I find mm -hmm. out there. They, there was no agenda or anything. Uh, they just said, we think this is a story. If you agree, go find out if it's true. And if it is, report it. Uh, and that's what we did. So I contacted some of the top experts in GPS in the nation. These are uh, the smartest people on the face of the earth, including the inventor, Brad Parkinson. He's 89 years old, uh, and he was hands down the sharpest person in the room when there were 27 of the sharpest people uh, in the world in that room. Um, and it was a two day, uh, not really a conference as much as it was actually an advisory board meeting. This is an official government advisory board and it was a public meeting. But guess what? Other than sort of the trade journal reporters that sometimes attend, I was the first journalist to ever cover oh, wow. this position navigation and timing advisory board meeting. And at first they weren't even sure how to handle it. And then they're like, well, yeah, it's an open meeting. So you're welcome. Um, you mentioned the inventor of GPS, and he's still with us. He's still sharp as a tack, um, really gives perspective about like GPS hasn't been around for ages and ages. Um, but he said in that story that the time is now, the urgency is now. What's next? Yeah, well, here's the problem is that GPS is not run by a single agency in the United States government. There are multiple ag agencies that have a piece of it. Yes, the military created GPS and the military, now Space Force, which was carved out of Space Command in the U.S. Air Force uh, under the last Trump administration. But Space Force runs essentially the military side of GPS, but they're military satellites. They're just open to the uh, civil you know, and, and civilian population to be able to use those signals. There are other agencies like NASA. In fact, that advisory board meeting we attended, they report to the executive committee at NASA. There's also the Department of Transportation. There's NIST, which runs the atomic clock in Boulder, which actually feeds the signal up to space. Um, the bottom line is this is the, the clock, the official clock of the United States. In fact, the red LED clocks all around this newsroom are synced to GPS because we have to stop talking on this CBS affiliate in order for Nora O'Donnell or the anchors mm -hmm. in yeah. uh, Washington or New York to start talking. Everyone has to stop at exactly the last second. Um, so what's next really is uh, the idea that this might be handed over to a civilian uh, control that GPS stay for the military with Space Force, but for the civilian population, it'd be handled by a civilian agency. But they're just an advisory board. It's up to 
the government leaders, both in the executive branch and the legislative branch, to enact some sort of change to make this happen? I just want to nerd out for a second here, talk about my own reaction. You did an excellent job kind of narrowing down how it matters to just the average person. Um, and on top of explaining it in your writing, just really cool graphics there, being able to do that time lapse behind you and kind of freezing the world or at least uh, Midtown as the visual. Uh, so my reaction was kind of fun. But what has been the public reaction so far, at least the people that have been a part of the story? What what was it like for them to watch yeah. the story? Well, first, I wish I really had the power to speed up the traffic on the downtown <laughs> connector. Uh, normally, it's stopping it's not a problem. That does it all by itself. Uh, but it was a hard story to tell in terms of visually. How do you tell a story yep. about an invisible signal? Um, it's also, we can't go up to space presently to go up and take pictures. We're certainly not in the Atlanta News First budget uh, to fly up there and take a look at the at the satellites. So it was a harder story to tell. And the other hard part of the story to tell is that we like to focus on sort of an individual who's mm -hmm. been impacted. Yeah. Um, because this has never gone down, there isn't an individual who's been impacted. I mean, almost 20 years ago, there um, in uh, 2003 or so, there was a, uh, a worker who had a GPS tracking unit that his uh, workplace had installed in his work vehicle. And he liked to meet up with his mistress for liaisons during work time. Hmm. And he bought a $10 jammer to jam yeah. the GPS. Yeah. He shut down Newark Airport because it shut, it shut down their instrument landing system, which depends on GPS. Wow. Wow. That shows you just how vulnerable the system is. But the reaction has been pretty good in terms of people are, their eyes are opened. Uh, I just got a call yesterday from one of my top sources who said, what can I do? What What is the next step? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, if you feel strongly about it, contact your elected uh, officials. Uh, the advisory board saw it. And even though I had to sort of simplify uh, the problem, uh, which is a very complex one, yeah. uh, they uh, responded very positively to the story we produced. Fascinating story and really excellent work because I, I haven't, I mean, I'm sure you can agree, I haven't really seen a lot of this kind of reporting, so we know it matters, and I'm glad that you've at least started the conversation um, in the broader world. Great work. Thank you for joining us. And if you've been watching or listening, this is Behind the Investigation with Atlanta News First Investigates. Be sure to watch and listen wherever you get your podcasts.